Some of y'all have gotten boundaries confused with control. Let me be the first to tell you that boundaries are all about you. It is not something that you set on somebody else, but I'm about to break all of this down for you right now. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. And today we are talking about all things boundaries. And if you don't even know what a boundary is, boundaries are just those invisible lines that you set for yourself and governs how other people treat and interact with you. Now, if you've ever watched or listened to any of my episodes on this channel, you already know that we have boundaries around pretty much everything in life, or at least we should. We got boundaries around our time, our money, our kids, our job, our sleep, our food. Typically, we all should have boundaries set up in our lives to make sure that we are protected and that other people are protected as well. But I've noticed, especially in these social media streets, because, you know, people be misusing words and saying things, overusing and misusing boundaries and trauma and narcissism and a whole bunch of other things that I think I'm actually going to break down in a video about the overused and misused words that we've been using in our society. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that later. Anyways, I found that people are also misusing boundaries too. Now I'm all here for people setting boundaries, keeping boundaries, because those are the two important elements of boundaries in general is that you have to set them, but you also have to keep them. Doing one or the other, it just won't work. And then people are like, well, I said this and I did this, but it didn't work. But did you do both and? Because, <laughs> you know, that's my word. You got to do both and sometimes. Did you do both and? Did you set them and did you keep them? Because you can set them, but if you don't keep them, what's the point? So before I move forward and kind of just have a dialogue and discussion about this, I want you to comment below, what are some boundaries that you have in your life that are super important that you do not bend and you do not budge on? I want to know, put it in the comment section. So like I already mentioned, I feel like we've gotten this boundary thing kind of crisscrossed, wrong, backwards, and I'm not sure where the confusion came about, but I want to help a whole bunch of you guys out today. Boundaries are not about other people. They are about you. They are about you, not about other people. So I understand people's sentiment and when they're trying to set boundaries, but they're also doing it wrong and they're trying to control the other person, which we know is ineffective because you can't control another adult human being at all. So let me give you an example. Actually, let me give you two examples because I'm going to give you a more hypothetical, professional one that I've seen with some of the couples that I've worked with in my career. And then I'm going to give you a personal one that has happened with my dad and I before um, in regards to our boundary situation. So the first one is, say, for instance, you have a married couple and the husband talks to the wife a little bit more aggressively or uses profanity or yells or does something that the wife doesn't feel comfortable with. Now, it's not abusive. It's not toxic but he's just doing too much, right? She thinks that setting a boundary would be, you can't talk to me like that anymore. Okay. <laughs> Again, sounds a little bit more like control because you are trying to tell another adult human being who's probably been doing this his whole entire life, oh, you can't talk to me like that when they've probably been talking to everybody in their life like that. But a more appropriate and the correct way to set a boundary is by saying, if you speak to me that way again, I will leave the room. Right? So do you see the difference between the first and the second one? The first one is, you can't talk to me like that. The second one is saying, if you talk to me like that, I am going to do something about it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the room. So we have to understand that when you set the boundary, you have to do something about it. You can't just say, you can't talk to me like that. But where's the action? Where's the change of behavior? You have to say, oh, if you talk to me like that again, I'm going to leave the room. I'm going to end the conversation. I'm going to take a walk around the block. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. That is the appropriate way to set a boundary. If you do X, I will do blank. 
And this is the result of what you did in the beginning state. I hope I'm helping y'all out and this makes some sense. So let me give you guys a real life example of something that happened between my dad and I years ago. This is a long time ago. And if you watch it, I don't even know if he's going to remember this. But my dad used to do this thing where he would call me and my sister back to back to back to back. And I'm not talking about like a 20 minute hour increment. I'm talking about back to back to back. Literally, we'll call you back to back like five, six times. Now, typically, if someone calls you that many times back to back, what are we thinking? It's an emergency. Something bad must have happened. You're trying to get my attention. You want me to answer the phone quickly. So this is why you're calling me back to back to back. So nine times out of 10, I was typically working, so I didn't get a chance to see all of the missed calls. So by the time I would see the missed calls, I would be, hello, hey, I'm calling him back. What's going on? What happened? You know, what's the emergency? And then he would say stuff like, oh, I was just calling you because I was at the grocery store and I seen that, you know, a certain type of food that you like was on sale. What? <laughs> you called me back to back six times? to tell me that she was at the grocery store and that a certain type of food that I like was on sale and I should go to the grocery store to buy some. Sir, get off my phone. I'm trying to work, okay? You are just being ridiculous. And so once that happened a few times, I was like, I can't keep doing this because you get my anxiety up, me thinking it's an emergency, something bad happened to him or somebody in my family. And so I just had to set the boundary. And so my boundary with him and to him is, hey, yo, <laughs> I understand that you want to get my attention and that you want to tell me something because you're retired and you got a lot more flexibility and free time than I do. But if you keep calling me back to back, I will not return your call at all. <laughs> if you keep calling me back to back and it's not an emergency, I will not answer your call or call you back at all. That was literally the boundary that I had to set. And he tried it again. Guess what happened, y'all? Keandra set the boundary and kept the boundary. So when he called me back to back a million times and I didn't call him back, he was like, oh, <laughs> let me not do that anymore. Because if that's the case, then this girl ain't gonna never answer her phone. Let me just call her like a regular human being one time <laughs> and her get back to me when she's able to because she's a busy person. And so now he understands that he can't do those things to me because I set the boundary and I kept the boundary. I did not go back on my word. I did not fumble. I didn't say, oh, okay, well, let me just see what's, no, 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 no. People in my family know I got strong boundaries, boo. <laughs> especially when it comes to the telephone. I'm actually a texter, so I don't really like being on the phone, especially for textable reasons like if you can text me and if it's a yes or no or you just want to tell me something real quick just text me we don't have to get on the phone for you to tell me about something that you saw at the supermarket now i know that that's a long example but that is just kind of a real life example of how you can set boundaries with other people if you do this i'm going to do that and you can do this with anybody with your job with your employees with your parents with your children with your spouse with friends with extended family members, just because someone is family or blood or have a higher up position than you does not mean that they get to run all over you. Does not mean that they get to do and say whatever they want to do and say in your life. That does not work. And I think that's the thing that I had to help me and my dad's relationship learn that just because you're older, just because you are my father, does not mean you can do and say anything at any given time. I live my life because I'm a grown adult woman. And if you want to be a part of it, you have to understand that these are my rules. These are my regulations. And these are the boundaries that I've set for myself. So if you want to have a active, healthy relationship with me, these are some things that we need to put in place. And it absolutely bothered his soul. <laughs> it still bothers his soul, to be honest with you um, now. But our relationship has gotten so much better because for a long time, we bumped heads big time just because of those things. And so I want wanted to give that example because sometimes setting boundaries is not always easy. It doesn't always get fixed right away. It's a process for some people, especially if they're not used to people keeping boundaries with them, right? You kind of got to stick to it and stick to it because what happens is you teach people how to treat you. So that means if you go back on your word consistently, 
um, they're going to think, well, I can just do and say whatever I want to do with them because they're going to keep being wishy-washy. And that's not the way you want to convey anything to anybody, right? You want them to be like, dang, that person is a woman of their word. That person is a man of their word. When they say something, they do it. And oftentimes, if it is an emergency or a safety issue, you should stick to your guns, right? Like you should not compromise in certain situations and circumstances. So I hope the first and the second example, the first example being more professional about the couples I gave, and then the second one being more personal about what I had to do with my own father is helpful to you in setting boundaries with other people. I think what I wanna convey is that oftentimes too many people don't set the boundary or keep boundaries because it feels uncomfortable, because you're scared of what the other person is gonna say. Well, if you do this, and I ain't gonna talk to you no more. Well, if you can't do this for me, then I'm not gonna give you no more money. And if you can't do, well, don't. <laughs> don't do it. It feels uncomfortable because there's going to be a moment in time where that person is going to have the opportunity to respond either in a positive manner to the boundary or a negative manner to the boundary. And what you do with that information determines how the relationship will go. And I seen this really dope quote, I guess it was a quote or a graphic or whatever you want to call it on social media, on Instagram, on an account called Couples Learn. And essentially it said, there is two levels to good boundaries. The first being you're blocking unhelpful and harmful things from coming in. But the second being you blocking unhelpful and harmful things from going out. Because we forget too, <laughs> that it's not all about other people, but it's also about us. And sometimes we're not perfect because we're human beings and we might be the one in error and we might be the one running over somebody else's boundaries or we might think someone should do something a different type of way so we're engaging with them a different type of way. And instead of trying to impose or set a boundary on someone else, we're the ones who need the boundary set on, right? So it's a two-way street, that reciprocity that I always talk about where you have to make sure that what you're doing and what you're giving out, you're protecting yourself, but also what you're allowing in from other people, you're protecting that as well. That is the key component to boundary. Well, thank you so much for watching another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. I hope something that I talked about in this video around boundaries was helpful to you. If it was, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this with somebody who needs it. And trust me, I know there's somebody in your life who needs it. So I will see you guys in the next episode next week. Bye.